it's Dr. Utter and today is February the 14th, 2013. This is my video on how to clean copper and remove tarnish from copper coins and other items. This process is easy, safe, and it only uses things that are already in your house. It works on pure copper and copper alloys up to about 20% impurities. So yes, it will work on brass, which is a copper alloy including some zinc, and it will work on bronze, which is a copper alloy that includes some tin. Sometimes it helps in aiding the um, identification of an item because you can't see the date or read the writing on it, and also it just looks nice. But first, a dire warning. Never, ever, ever, ever clean your copper coins. Never. As a reminder, any copper coin will have a numismatic value, uh, junk value, and a face value to it. If you clean a copper coin, you're saying that you don't care about this at all. There's no chance in the future that any coin collector will ever want your coin again if you clean it. So please, never clean your copper coins unless you absolutely know what you're doing or if you're willing to say, I don't care about its numismatic value, it's never going to be a coin collector's coin. It's just a coin for its face value or it's for its junk value. This particular coin is one doesn't have a particular numismatic value per se, but I like the color of it just fine. I don't think it needs to be cleaned. I think that it has aged nicely and has a nice finish to it. This is another coin that I'm not going to clean. Here's another one. Now that you have decided you are going to clean your copper item, you need to know a little bit about how copper reacts with other atoms. Copper, like silver, which is in the same metallic group, reacts with the air and reacts with atoms uh, in the environment around it. So you will get a copper coin which probably looks something like this um, 100 years ago, 1903, this one. Um, and it can turn almost any other color. It can turn black. It can turn a light brown, it can turn a blue or a green color, it can turn almost a reddish color, and of course it can turn a darker brown color as well. And there are other colors that copper has been known to turn, like orange and red. It all depends on where the copper is in the world. It also depends on how the copper is used. This copper, of course, was used as coins, so the copper was exposed to oil from people's hands, and part of this um, oxidization, or as they call it on copper, patina, uh, was caused by people's hands and the oil from people's hands. You can almost feel the surfaces, uh, very smooth, almost oily feeling, and uh, that patina has incorporated not only uh, copper oxides and, and sulfides of copper, but it has incorporated hand oils and other environmental dirts and oils. Here's a copper pipe. As you can see, it's almost gray sort of a greenish bluish gray color and that is copper as you can see on the end it's definitely copper I cut it open recently and maybe you can see in the inside there it has not reacted the water doesn't react with copper so this pipe had water in it for years and years and years so the outside was reacting with air but the inside was not reacting with the water inside the process of forming the patina on copper is long. It takes several months, sometimes up to 30 years, to finally complete the process of turning from what it started at into what it will end up looking like. And some people don't like to remove that process. They like to keep that on there, even if their coins are ugly or hard to read or whatever. So as I said before, this is only if you really want to uh, scrub off any potential collector value of your items and you just want to get it right down to the metal. I've selected these three coins as the ones I'm going to clean up today. This is a 1961 one penny from Great Britain. This is shortly before, you know, this is a very large penny. In fact, these large pennies were around for uh, quite some time in Britain, and they are a third of an ounce of copper, which is quite nice. So three of these will make up um, a full ounce of copper. This one happens to be Tombac, um, a type of metal that is classified under brass. It's zinc and copper, almost all completely copper. It's what we had to use in Canada during the Second World War because we didn't have any nickel for our tank armor. And this is just a good old uh, copper penny from Canada in 1919. 
It's very dirty on the back. It's got multiple different patinas. Uh, I don't know what this black stuff is, but uh, we'll see what we can do with this process, which will remove pretty much everything. And uh, as you'll see, it's quite easy to do. First, get yourself a non-reactive bowl or container. Uh, glass works well, a ceramic or something like that would also work. Uh, I wouldn't use metal just in case that metal that you're using reacts with any of the processes that we're going to be doing. So I've already added some but I'll put some more. Uh, this is just plain old household vinegar. All we're doing is using the vinegar for its acidity. And next what we're going to do is we're going to put salt in there, mix it around. You can get uh, stir stick or something. And keep on adding salt until the salt doesn't dissolve anymore. You want it to be as salty as you can possibly get it. And if you slowly add salt until it stops dissolving, that's perfect. And uh, if you get too much salt in there and you just keep on trying and it cannot um, dissolve, then you've reached saturation. And you need to put a little bit more vinegar in there and that salt will dissolve. Once you have no salt but it's as salty as you can possibly get it then you're ready to go on to the next step. There we go that looks to have finally just dissolved in there and once you have that ready which is technically a brine, um, an acidic brine I guess you could say, once that's done next all you need to do is drop in your silver items. So we'll do one at a time. Here's that first one. You may be able to see it happen um, live on the camera. It may not show up very well until I actually wash it in the sink. So um, This is the first part of the process and it's absolutely necessary. Yeah, you can already see that a lot of that patina is already coming off there and that tarnish. This, pro this part of the process will loosen up the um, patina's hold on the surface of the copper. The patina is usually very thin, extremely thin in fact. Um, if you remember the Statue of Liberty, that's made of copper and that has uh, turned a greenish sort of color, kind of like that one. Uh, oops, I got that one. Got that one wet with my finger. I guess I better put that one in too because it's going to start to react. Um, well, it'll be an interesting experiment, see what happens. But uh, yeah, the Statue of Liberty is coated in a patina. And that patina actually is very protective of the copper's surface. Um, we'll prevent that from tarnishing any further. And uh, unlike rust on iron, it provides a protective layer around the copper. So if you have a patina on something, um, roofing tiles, for example, made of copper, that's usually a good thing. Now, as you can see, this one's completely, um, almost totally clean already. Um, not going to need a lot more cleaning other than that. So I'm going to remove it from here and just set it aside. I'm going to put one of the other coins in. That's that 1919 from Canada. And I think if you look closely, you'll notice that it has changed already. Um, not super confident how well that's showing up on there, but we'll keep going. And the patina is uh, multi-layered, as I said before, so it's got layers of uh, oil from people's hands, it's got dirt from the environment, it's got other um, chemicals from the air that will react with the surface of the coin. And then it'll get sulfides from pollution in the air that will react and continue to create layers on the surface of the coin. So it sometimes can take multiple um, cleansings for you to get all those layers off. But as you can see, that one's well on its way as well. And I'm going to put the brass nickel, well, brass five cent piece, I guess you can say, right in there. You can see on the surface it's got some green, it's got some brown, but it's already starting to lighten up as we speak. sure about that one. That one's going to take a few treatments for sure. But I'm going to move you over to the sink and we'll get on with the next process. Okay. Bring 
this over just to show that I haven't changed anything. No camera tricks here used. Get some warm water going. Hopefully you can still hear me. Rinsing the coin off will stop the acidic process. So uh, once you've done that, the coin is pretty much safe from eroding any further in your vinegar and brine solution. But uh, there's the one coin that's not going to need a heck of a lot more. We got this one here. This one here, which is showing improvement already. And the brass piece. Looking better than it did. Now we can take and set aside the vinegar, but don't throw it away. Next we're going to use a mild abrasive, and in this case, it's just plain old baking soda. So I'll show you first on this coin. Now this wouldn't have worked if we hadn't done the vinegar brine process first. Uh, this would have had almost no effect. You can scrub a dirty copper coin with baking soda all day and almost nothing will happen. But once you've uh, done that first treatment, it loosens up the patina. And then just with a little bit of abrasion, very, very gentle abrasion, this really doesn't harm the surface very much. Although, as I've said a hundred times, don't do it on any numismatic coins, that's for sure. But as you can see, it's getting a little better. Sprinkle a bit more on there. Stuff makes really good toothpaste too, by the way. Okay. Definitely an improvement. This one I'm not going to even bother with the baking soda. It doesn't have any physical dirt on the surface or any um, ground and patina that needs to be removed from the surface at all. So that one's pretty much done. I'll show you the tom back, the brass, next. It's pretty obvious. Once again, this wouldn't have done anything if we hadn't done that first process first. And this one, which we accidentally <laughs> cleaned, doesn't seem to have had any improvement at all, although that bluish green color is partly gone, but it's looking very dark and mysterious at the moment. Let's see what happens with a bit of this. Well, you can see the baking soda is getting quite dirty. Any improvement at all? Hmm, maybe. That's going to need another treatment in the vinegar brine. So is that one, although it is improved. This one I'm going to set aside as finished now. And this one does need another process through the vinegar. But what I'm going to do before I do that is wash them with a little bit of just regular hand soap. And that helps to remove any oil, uh, hand oil from people that is ground in. And it's been ground in for, in this case, well over a hundred years. You won't notice much noticeable effect um, visibly with this but uh, I have found that washing with a little bit of soap in between certainly doesn't hurt and in most cases it usually helps loosen up the patina. And now we're ready to take these three back to the vinegar again. In you go. Give them a couple minutes. Okay, back to the sink I go with these. I'm going to give them another scrub with the baking soda and a little bit of soap as well. After a second scrubbing, the nickel is done. So I'm going to put that aside and this guy is getting close. So I'll put him back in this one. It's improvement anyways. 
Okay, let's talk results. Here's that first British penny. All it needed was to be dipped. Didn't need to be scrubbed at all. Beautiful. This one needed a couple of scrubs, but it came out nice and clean. Interestingly, there is a pinkish color on the back here, on the left-hand side, just above the beaver's head. Not sure how well you can see that there, but uh, I don't know. I think it looks kind of nice. I'm not really sure what would have caused that. Maybe a slightly improper mixing of the metals when they made this piece of brass. I'm not sure. But anyhow, there's a bit of pink as well as the, the golden color there. And this is the 1919 Canadian scent. It has some other damage on it that can't be cleaned, I guess. Uh, or maybe I could scrub it again and keep going. I only gave it a few minutes. And the one we accidentally dropped in there. <laughs> we can now tell what it is anyways. 1908 British one scent. But um, that's going to need a heck of a lot more scrubbing. And a few more dips in the bath as well to get clean. But... I don't know, as you can see, um, copper is a very attractive metal. It has a lot of uses. Here are some other copper, brass, and bronze medallions and rounds and other items that I've cleaned recently. Hope you enjoyed the video. Consider bookmarking it, coming back to it later. Pass it on to a friend if you think it would be useful.